Hey, my name is Peter Buey and this video will go through the basic steps and configuration that you will need to do to get your working project into Bitbucket or cloning a existing project that is already in Bitbucket to your local host machine so you can start working on it and testing it. Okay, so let's start off by firstly creating a brand new uh, Bitbucket repository. In this case, I'm working on a project called Crazy Egg, a little integrator that we built a few years back in regards to getting Crazy Egg uh, code working on a Joomla website. So I'm going to call this plg-crazy egg. I won't give it a description. I'll keep it private now for now and I'll just create the repository. And that is done. So now I can either clone this, but what I'll do is, uh, you can see here that it gives you the instructions for if you have an existing project. And I already do, and if I just go ls here, I can see the files of my existing project here. Uh, crazyegg.php.xml, readme file, and a zip of all of that as well. So I want to put those files into my existing project. So I'm just going to expand this. There we go, just expanded that. And you can see a couple of commands there that you may need in regards to, or you will need actually, in regards to setting this up. But I'll show you how to do this a quick and easy way using uh, Atlassian's tool called Source Tree. And that's what I have open here. So first off, what I need to do with this particular project is put it into a git repository in the first place, or I do the git init command to make these files uh, appear as a working git folder. So I'm just typing the command git init, so that's that will initialize this directory. Initialized empty git repository in user uh, the folder. Okay, so that my folder has been initialized and rule is now working with git. Great. So now I'll scroll back to my uh, source tree, source tree uh, repository manager, and I'll click on the first icon here, which is add repository. Now you've got the options here. I can either clone a repository, so that means I'll pull down. A repository from Bitbucket that might already exist but in this case I'm adding a working copy code of a site that I already have on my desktop and I want to put it into that uh, third not third party I want to put it into the remote repository that's actually on Bitbucket itself so I'll put my path of my working copy code here and this should be under crazy egg for Joomla there it is my four files and go open. Great. And it's detected that this is a git repository. If I didn't do this command here a little bit earlier, the git init command, this step here would flag with a little warning saying this is not a git controlled repository. But in this case I've already done that so that it's working just fine. So now I'm going to check the bookmark name and I'm happy with that so go add. So there it is there. I'm going to double click on this and I'll just expand this a little bit bigger. And here I can see all the files of my project um, that are being uh, tracked at the moment within that repository. Right. Now, the very first thing that you need to do is actually uh, commit these files or stage them so that they can be committed. So, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just click on the files that I want to track and control in git. So that's the first one, the crazyegg.php, crazyegg.xml. Now I don't want to actually track this file here. This is a file that's there for distribution and for the releases, so I'll leave that one as is. The last one I want to track is the readme file as well. Great, so that's, that's looking good. So the next step is to actually commit these files commit these files to my git repository. So I want to tr start tracking all of these files. So I'll hit the git icon at the very top. Uh, commit, sorry. 
And of course, I have to leave a comment here. Uh, so that way we can track which uh, commits are happening within the system. So I'll call this one initial commit. And I'll hit the commit button. Great, okay. So now anytime my code changes in any of those files, uh, the Git will automatically detect what ch file changes have happened. And I can visually see those file ch files change right here within my uh, source tree manager as well. Now I still have this file here and it will continuously appear here as well. So what I'll do in this case is I'll right click on the file, on the file here, and I'm going to ignore this particular file. So I don't want to actually track this file ever. So I'm going to click on the ignore link here and ignore this exact file name for not global. I don't want to block all files um, with matching that name, even though it should only appear in this project. I'm just going to say this repository only. All right, and hit OK. Great. And I do need to track the git ignore so that uh, that file always is ignored. And I'll go that and I'll go commit. Now, because I've just done a commit before, uh, a few seconds ago, I'll just click on the options over here um, and I'm going to amend the last commit. So I'm adding in this very last uh, file, the git ignore one into my commit as well. Hit commit and I am replacing the last one that was there or amending it, sorry, so adding to it. There we go, okay. So I have nothing else in my working folder to track now. So I'm good to push this to the repository. So to do this, normally I'll just hit the push button here, but I actually don't have any repositories yet. Uh, my local working copy and my git code my code that has been placed into Git doesn't actually have a remote repository to put it into. Think of it as uh, an FTP server. The remote Git repository, which is on Bitbucket, is your file and FTP server. And you have your files already on your local host and environment to put up there. But I haven't put in those details yet. So SourceTree doesn't actually know where to put those files. So I'll just go up to the top here and go repository and click on the link here, the menu item, add remote. And here I can actually define where this remote uh, repository is. So I'll give this a name, crazy egg plugin. And I need to supply the URL and path. Now I can click on this and browse particular projects that are uh, connected with my source tree account at the moment. So I can scroll through all this. So I'll type in crazy, crazy. And I, I'm not too sure if that's it. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, okay, PLG, crazy, that should be it. So uh, I'll just go back here, choose that and go, okay. I'm just checking this uh, URL path here. So it's got my username, at bitbucket.org, username again, and the PLG crazy egg. So that looks pretty much right here. I could have just copied the URL from here and pasted it into this little bit up here as well. Oops. Well, not exactly that. I have to put my username in as well. So it's easier just to browse here on uh, the little browse hosted projects icon. So uh, everything else here looks right. My username is Peter Bury. That's great. And I'll hit OK. So now uh, my, uh, my uh, project here has a remote repository, which is great. It's got, got uh, my details in there. And I'll just click on the OK button. And now I should be able to push this to that remote repository. So let's check here. If I click on commit now on my remote repository, there's no commits yet. So I'll go back to my application. I'll go to the master branch here so I can see my code. There's the initial commit that I did a little bit earlier. 
And now I'll push this. So I push it to the master branch. Sometimes you have a whole bunch of branches here. I'll talk about that in a second. But I'll just click that master branch because I'm in master at the moment and I will go OK. Now that's pushing all of that code up to the remote repository. Might just take a little bit of time. And with the magic of editing, I can speed it up. I'll hit the close icon, close button, sorry. And that's it. So now I can see here, these little icons mean uh, a couple of different things. So this one here means uh, the local repository master, and this is the remote uh, repository of master. So that's what those little icons are. And that's the view that I'm looking at at the moment. Okay, now let's create a couple of branches on this. All right, hang on, I should check if this has been updated and if the code really is in the remote repository. So let me just refresh. And there it is. Let's see what's in that commit. I'll just click on that link and I can see my files that I've added into the commit. Uh, did I leave a comment? Yes, initial commit, that's great. I can see all of the code there too. Perfect, great. Now we'll just go back. Now let's play around with some of these files in here and see, see what happens. Now before I play around with the files and, and do any modifications, I'm going to want to create a new branch. The master branch here is saved for releases. So that's the release that the public should be getting. So, and that's the code that shouldn't really be messed with. Think of it as code on an FTP server. You wouldn't really mess around with that code on the live site. You'd work on it locally on your dev environment, test it, and then push it up to the, the live server. And in this case, it's called the master. So here I will we'll create a branch. So I'll click on the little branch icon in the top toolbar, and I'll create this new branch and call it develop. That looks good. Working copy, a copy of the parent, which is the master branch. And I'll go create branch. Brilliant. So now I've got a develop branch and I'll double click on that to make sure that's the current branch that I'm working on. So if I go back to master, yeah, it's switching. Develop, great. Okay, now I can do some changes. Now I can actually work on the code in the development branch. And I will switch back to my, my uh, terminal here. And I'll just do a quick change in one of the files and you can see how uh, Git controls the changes and tracks all the changes. So here I'll go. Uh, I think Pico is my editor on this one. Pico and I'll edit the XML file. Crazy egg XML, great. So I will just change something here. I uh, don't know what to change. Okay, so I'll change my email from .com.au to just .com. Uh, all the other details here are right. I don't know why I decided to change this one. This one's perfectly fine. Anyway, let's exit this and save. So I'll go write it, good and exit the file, great. So LS, my files are still there, that's cool. Now let's go back to source tree and let's see what it has picked up. Aha, uh -huh. what's going on here? So my working copy, my late, oops, let's go back to develop branch. My latest one up here has suddenly detected some changes. So I can see here on the code side that this line was the original one and the green line down below it is what it's been changed to. So I can see it's been changed from a .com.au to a .com. And I, will, I was happy with that change. Uh, what else has changed down here? Uh, a new line at the end of the file. Nothing too important. So we, we, we can ignore that change. But let's commit this to our development branch now. So I can see that the file here is unstaged. And I'm happy with that change now on that particular file. So I'm going to hit the select button. 
and put it into the staging area ready for it to be committed. And I will commit this now. Uh, again, you have to put a comment. And in this case, I'll put a comment about that change that I did. And I'll say something on the lines of updated email address domain name. Perfect. And I'll hit the commit button and I can see that it's all good to go here. So my development branch, which I'm working on here, update email addresses to the domain. I can see what the change was. Let's push this up to the remote repository. So I'll hit the push and it's not the master branch I'm working in. I'm actually working on the development branch. So I'm gonna untick that and click develop. And the remote development branch will be automatically created. I'll show you what it looks like at the moment. If I click on branches here on the remote one, that develop branch won't exist. There's only the master. That's why it's not showing me anything. So I'll go back to the source and I'll go back to my source tree and go, okay. It's doing its thing. It's uh, putting up all of the code again with the magic of editing. I'll speed that up, go close. Great, okay, so now I've got a master branch and my development branch. Now I can switch between these two at any point in time and my code is going to change on my desktop. So let's go to the master branch and see what's happened to that file in my editor. So I'll go pico crazyegg.xml and I'm looking for that email address and there it is, my email address still has the .com.au and that's what I should be expecting because I switched back to the master branch. So let me exit that, let's have a look at the code, yep, definitely in the master branch. Now let's switch over to the development branch, double click on that, great, and I'll go back to the editor again and I'll do the same command to open up the same file and what's changed? There we go, my email address there. It is a .com, exactly what I would expect. Now, this is a quick and easy way to switch between a working version of your code and a development version of your code. So let's exit this. <clears throat> now, uh, when I'm happy with my particular piece of code, I may wish to uh, merge my development branch back into the master branch. So that way I can deploy this code out to the rest of the world. Remember, I'm not deploying code from my development branch. I'm only deploying from the master branch. Okay, so let's click on a development one here, make sure it's selected, and I'm gonna click the merge uh, button in the toolbar here. Now all this merging and putting it back to the master branch. This is usually done by the master committer. So a person will be editing or auditing the code, verifying it for errors and making sure it's all good. So not everyone should have access to be able to merge the code back into master. Only a few certain select people such as the project manager or the code managers of the uh, actual project itself. But I'll show you how this works. I'll click on, or actually before I show you how it works, let's have a look at how it looks on uh, Bitbucket. So I'll click on the branches here. There we go. And I can see the master branch and the development branch there, which wasn't there before. Now I can also see here that this is one ahead. So that means the development branch has changes in here that is ahead of the master branch itself. So there may be three or four uh, changes of code, whatever it is, but there's one commit that is ahead of the master branch. So what I'm going to do now is merge them so that the master branch and the development branch are in synchronization again. Uh, the develop won't be ahead, the master won't be behind. So let's go back here. And I've, in the development branch, I've selected the latest changes and I want to merge that back into the master. So I'll click on the merge button. Great, pick a 
commit, you want to merge into the current tree. So that one is one that I want to commit. Great, commit and merge, no conflicts, and go OK. Whoops, hang on. Ah, right, sorry, I'm in the wrong branch. Have to click on master. And then the master is here at the moment in this line of the track. And I want to commit that one into the master. So I'm on the master. Let's go merge now. And it's the development branch. This one here, the development that I want to commit into the master. So I've chosen it right this time. It was a little bit confusing before. And go OK. Great. Now, so now my master is one ahead as well. And I need to push that up to the repository. This time we're going to select both branches, but only really the master is being updated at the moment. Great. Now I don't have any notifications saying one ahead or one behind. And I can see here that my remote repositories and my local uh, repositories are all in sync. So I've got all the branches there and they look like they're all in sync. Let's check this on here. I will refresh this page and this should no longer be ahead. Perfect. Fantastic. And my dev branch has been merged into the master branch as well. So that's it. That's a really quick overview of um, uh, Git and how we use it in our office space here to manage particular projects, code changes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, hopefully that will give you an idea of how to set it up and how to run with a working piece of code into a GitHub repository or a Bitbucket repository in this case. Okay, thank you.